I'm going to hide the topography just to keep things simple for now. At the simplest level, and let me just go to the zero layer so I can keep the objects there. At the simplest level, if I go to create geometry and make, let's just say, a teapot, right? There's my teapot. The way to create a proxy is actually really, really straightforward. When you have an object, you select it, you right click on it, then you go to Vray Properties. Actually, I take it back. To create a proxy, you select the object, right click on it, and then you go to Vray Mesh Export. When you click on Vray Mesh Export, what it does is brings up this dialog where it prompts you for a location for your export file. And this is going to be the proxy file that's going to live outside of it and you can see the name here it's called teapot01.vrmesh and so it takes the object name and gives it a proprietary file format and at the bottom here you can specify how you want that object to be previewed in your scene because you still want to be able to see some of it but you don't need the actual object in your scene and so on their folder I'm just going to click browse I'm going to go to desktop for now. I think it's fine since we're doing a test. Export each selected object in a separate file. In this case, yes. We only have one object, so that's fine. Teapot 01 is okay. Faces in preview. 10,000 faces is probably quite a bit. Let's say I only want 2,000 faces. Really don't need that many. I just kind of need to know where it is. Refine clustering quality is fine. And hit OK. Boom. Okay, if I go and look at my desktop, you can see there's a teapot VR mesh file right there. So that's where it lives. When you go to create object, if you go to V-Ray at the bottom, you can see here's a V-Ray proxy. So if I click on that, I'm able to add an object and it immediately prompts me to go select a VR mesh. So in this case, now I can go to my desktop, hit VR mesh for my teapot open and there is a proxy of it. Oops, sorry, let me just get out of that. So there is the proxy, and when I select it, you can see it's referencing a file outside of this max model. And then I have different, you can see it's very, very sort of rough in its format, right? But if I were to render this, it's gonna look you know, exactly like what I basically exported out. And this one is still pretty low poly, but that's not a consequence of the proxy. This is just a consequence of the model itself. I didn't refine it too much, but you can see here's the teapot. And then there's different ways of visualizing this in your model. You can make it as a bounding box, right? So this basically is just very few polygons that, you know, when you render, it'll still look like a teapot. The representation in your model can be a box. If you can imagine a file where you have 10,000 trees, you don't need to see all the trees with all their leaves or part of the leaves. You can just see them as simple boxes, you know, just to save time and it's easier to navigate on your screen. Show whole mesh, show point, you know, show faces, etc. You can scale it here, but you can also rotate it. And here, I'll just do a preview here. You can rotate it, you know, you can move them anywhere you want. You can copy them as long as you instance them they're fine you can create as many of these as possible and the nice thing about the instances in max is they can all still be unique in terms of their location their size and their position but they're still all referencing one proxy so i can create thousands of copies of these and none of these objects live in this max file. They're all referenced from an outside file that only gets called upon when you have to render. So it's a very powerful tool.